dollar bill, yo. This week, we are going to read the 5-4 patch notes, which should be coming pretty darn quick to everybody. I have a feeling that you guys may be seeing 5-4 imminently. Uh, let's see. Sacrifice and XP. Uh, XP changes and updates have been made it to... Uh, made it? Made to monster definitions. We probably should update that patch note, because that patch yeah, note is it basically... Is, it's actually more exciting than that, right? Yeah, it is, yes, because it, is. it means that NPCs will now give experience on kill up to level 10, I believe. Mm -hmm. So all of those muskogs and hellcats that are currently in the map will give a small amount of XP after you change the value from the ridiculous value that we had in for testing for us. Uh, so... We are going to allow uh, killing of NPCs up to level 10 for now and see how that works out for leveling of vessels. And flawed assembly when the result is a failure but an item is still granted. Correct. So let's, let's talk about this one. So we finally got to the point where the sacrifice system was good to go and we were able to take away the crafting failure eating your items. Now we're going to give you an object that you can go use in the sacrifice system. Or if you're really in a pinch, you can still use that item. So there are now three difficulties of assembly. The amazing one is basically, I think the players have been calling it bootstrapping, where they put a small amount of a higher rarity resource in there to try and bump up the end result of the item because they now have a chance to do that. So you will either get an amazing assembly, a successful assembly, or a flawed assembly. And the flawed assembly drops down the quality level by one and prevents that item from being experimented on. So it, it's it's still giving you a template item. You, you still have a bunch of use for it. It's just not as good as obviously if you'd made the other two. Now what Mark pointed to before that was the baseline difficulties of all recipes are now easier because Charlie went in, not only did he go in the chocolate factory, but he went in and gave us a little bit of crafting engineering effort. And the... Uh, the difficulty of the assembly now scales based on the highest quality of resource in the combine. So if your average combine is all using poor quality resources, you have no modifier. And with the new lower difficulty, it should be very easy to, to do that combine. If you, for example, put rare resources in there, now you've just jacked up the difficulty. So you have a higher chance of failure, but you also have the chance now of an amazing assembly which will produce everything from that recipe as rare quality rare 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 so basically if you want to have higher difficulty you can you can uh, use rarer resources if you want to have lower difficulty you can use more common and readily readily available stuff like knotwood and, and whatever so this is great because it should enable the newer crafters who are also assuming really don't have access to epics or rares or legendary resources. They pretty much have access to commons and uncommons at the outset. And having access to those, they should generally succeed at those recipes. Challenge before was we were trying to balance one recipe for master crafters and one recipe for beginner crafters. So we kind of averaged it, which meant it was too easy for the masters and it was too difficult for the beginners. So now it's it starts out baselines fairly easy as long as you're using lower quality resources. The second you start putting high quality stuff in there, you're, you're now playing with fire, but you chose to play with fire. Right. And I, I think it's, it's also worth pointing out again that, that failure is still there, but when you fail now, you don't lose everything. Yep. Right? You're still going to get something that's still useful to you because you can sacrifice it or you can still, you can, in some cases, uh, you could still use it. It might still be good enough, good enough for you. Right. right. So, I mean, that's basically two-prong two prong improvement to crafting quality of life, basically. So, pretty, and pretty exciting. I think a, a subtle side effect of moving the crafting recipes deeper into the trees is people who really didn't want to craft anyways now won't be. Right. Right. And then in, the, uh, in an upcoming update, they'll just be able to go to a player-run vendor and pick up the stuff that they need. They will be able to do basic and intermediate stuff, and, and there you have it. And at that point, from an intermediate on, they'll go buy their stuff. Uh, temporary fix updated uh, crafting recipes to now have a time of one second to help alleviate some of the WASD movement issues with crafting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a large feature task that uh, one of our engineers just started on, which is basically to make every single crafting station remember what you're crafting at it for the long term. So, for example, if there was a 
combined that took 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, that's, you could leave that station and it would cook and you would come back and be able to grab it. Currently what happens until we get this, what he's putting in right now, the second you close that uh, UI, all your stuff is gone. Good thing, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you heard me going there. Stop! <laughs> yeah, so this is unfortunate, and this is going to be a reality in 5.4, mainly because the tech is being built today, and we don't want to gate 5.4 any longer going out waiting for this one specific feature. Um, in the future, it will be cooler, but for now, it, it's going to kind of be rough in 5.4. What we've done as a temp fix is we lowered all of the crafting times down to one second. This is only going to exist in the 5.4 lifespan. We'll put them back to regular crafting uh, times after 5.4. That way that window is only up for a second and you only have a brief time. We've also disabled when you're naming the things to stop yeah. activating powers and trying to move you. So when you're crafting in 5.4, please just remember if that crafting window closes, you're hosed and we will fix that in 5.5. In, five, five. in fact, it's being worked on this week. It's just not going to make 5.4. Uh, powers. A new recall power has been added and, and defaults to the 8 key in the survival tray. This power allows players to recall to their faction's beachhead. It also has a 10 second cast time, currently. So, we put this power in to help people who were getting stuck, as well as to give uh, people a way to quickly get back to the uh, beachhead if they see a roving band bearing down on them. So there you go. It, uh, we'll see how this works. Uh, for right now, it's going on eight. So if you accidentally hit it, uh, if you, it's got a two meter leash range. So if you move two meters away from where you started casting it, it will break it. And it has a long cast time so you don't accidentally just hit a button and get, yeah. get zapped back to, back to the beachhead. I think we're going to move it to the F12 key at some point, and uh, I think we're going to put it off to the side because right now it's eating a tray hop bar spot. Again, we, we put this in because we want to we want to play with this and see how it works out. Um, we're going to move it around when we uh, when we get a chance. Weebles TV has there been any work on allowing ground targeted spells abilities to work on top of building assets, etc. Druid globes being placed on top of the wall. Uh, piece instead to the ground in the asset. So it sounds like they're thunking, and I'm not sure that powers know that they're being executed inside of a building. And this is pretty, it's a pretty common uh, bug that you see in most games during development. That one will get fixed at some point because, yeah, it kind of sucks. It also sucks that you don't see your projection underneath. Right. When you're in a building, it's actually thunking to the terrain and it doesn't know about the ground inside of whatever you're inside of. So that is a level of refinement that will come along, I'm sure, in beta. Okay, question. Will monster XP be shared between allies or group members based on last hit or damage, etc.? All right, so we're basically doing the uh, doing what was termed a surplus model, which basically means if, you, uh, if you've engaged with it, if you're on the hate list, right? Yep. Then, uh, then you're getting credit. For uh, for the XP and it's it's full credit. The credit is yeah, full credit. No, we're not at this point. We're not doing anything to split them or anything. No. Um, so we're gonna try this and so that means it is better to group up with each other. Yeah. And There's no disadvantage to grouping or having people help you. Correct. So. Uh, any news on cloaks or capes? Right now, the half elf and the human have the cloak slot on them. We're trying to figure out a way to make them look good between the races, between those two specific races okay uh recall versus having to take your stuff back yourselves or via caravan recall be used as a teleport home with good sounds terrible for pvp remember recall is taking you back to the beachhead the beachhead right now may be important to you but come five five and further on it's going to be a huge inconvenience to go back to the beachhead because it's way out of the way of where your forts and your keeps are uh, remember, you can't think about where we are on all of these right now yeah. because things are changing. And you guys have been playing a map that's way old and is a single map. We're getting ready to start going to multi-continent maps. And going back all the way to the starting square is going to be a big pain in the ass. So right. I don't know that everyone's going to want to do it. It helps us right now specifically because people are still getting stuck 
in weird terrain spots. So if you do get stuck, please submit a, a ticket on it. I think I put that in one of the patch notes. Uh, so we can go look at that location and see what's going on. Because in a lot of uh, cases, the environment team still isn't exactly sure what causes someone to get stuck in a spot. Otherwise, they wouldn't have built that particular um, contraption. So, right. is it worth talking about cat mouse at this point? Uh, since I mean, since we're still designing it, I, I okay, don't. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Overview wise, how's this year looking? Looking from month to month, or some motions on a fuller game? Uh, I expect. Uh, we're trying to get to a month to month cadence so it will start to feel more and more like a game as every month goes by yeah. i mean once we get uh once vendors are in there there will in theory be a full loop full of loop. Uh, of kill buy sell and the players will be stocking those vendors with stuff so if you can't find stuff on the vendors blame on res let's tell you right now if the vendors aren't stocked it's on res's fault and his Twitter is available somewhere in there. So please, bug on res. Will the ranged Raycast Cone be reevaluated? It is not about every everyone being FPS gods. It's about get good. So the presentation of Raycast for range is far too easy and there's no skill needed. Well, we're obviously going to keep tuning that. It just hasn't been a high priority now because we are have so many other balls in the air right now. But... I assure you, we will definitely be looking at the width of that raycast. Ideally, I'd like it to be a reverse one, where it's shaped more like a triangle rather than a sphere cast. That way it's narrow closer to you and wider further away, whereas right now it's just wide the entire way. Right. Does that make sense? So if it was like that, then it wouldn't seem like it's broken at close range, but you would still be able to, at 80 meters, uh, be able to hit a pixel properly. Anyways, tweaking in progress as always. Uh, Stoneborn, how long must we wait? That is a Melissa question. We should get Melissa in here and make her answer that one. And I'm not going to say soon on that one because I'd totally be lying. I know. Uh, recall helps people switch class race. Yes, because it gets you back to the beachhead, which is where the POI for switching vessels will be. Will we see an adventure parcel soon? We are hoping within 5.5 that you see an adventure parcel. Working on it. Continent maps. Ships confirmed? Uh, no. You will be uh, using magic moon gates to go between the uh, continents. Continent is what we're calling currently what's a map, which is the 40 by 40 grid. And a map will be constructed within that. And then multiple maps will be linked together to form a much larger world. On res, no good crafting tables at Beachhead. You take the mats there. You still have to take them to the fort to the keep, so not a huge advantage. Okay. Have you looked into how fast some classes get their C ultimate ready? Some classes get it really fast at the moment. Uh, if you believe um, one class or another gets their ultimate too fast or whatever, let us know. We can look at it. Um, I think right they now... Should no, ideally, they sh everybody should be even, but who knows? Well, no, the knight they, they get, has really... the knight costs five hundred. Yeah, right? there are. Yeah, sure. That that actually is a good. I, good I think thing to that's point what out. they don't realize. Okay. Yeah. So some ultimates only cost five hundred, and some cost one thousand. So yes, some some ultimates will charge up literally twice as fast as others. Correct. And that is that is by design. Will we see a release scale map soon? We are slowly working our way towards that. XP CJU. That is that is on that is the goal for the early year, and we're every uh, ideally every publish has us push towards the bigger world and not just dealing with maps. Rest in peace, my healer Templar dream. Rip. Nope. Just specking the support power. Support power. Put some support power on that gear again. Go see Andres for some plate that has support power on it. Because you can totally do that. Wanted to buy Melee Healer Legio Cough. You can make a cleric. Ah, a cleric centaur who's using a polearm. We haven't re released the polearm as a racial, but I've done some prototyping and it's definitely in the works for the future. So you can make a centaur who, instead of throwing hammers, hits people with a stick. Hits people with a stick. 
yeah, they, they will get a racial weapon, which happens to be the polearm, because we have that. Any plans to make a basic or intermediate scimitar? No. So just like with focus orbs, and I saw the focus orb being worked on. It is super cool. You guys are going to love it. Uh, it looks fantastic. It's these cool orbs that are floating. Anyways, uh, those are designed to be the specialist tools. So you need to take that, that, that weapon specialty if you want that special thing. Again, it's us making it such that you have to, there are a lot of choices and to get some of the things you're going to have to make those choices because meaningful choices are cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Barred hit point regen, you cannot equip it on the survival tray. Terrible values. Yeah. Um, not liking the values is not necessarily a bug. Correct. It's good feedback, though. Um, I don't, I believe we, let you do healing abilities from the survival tray, because otherwise you would just stay in the survival tray and run fast, right? Yes, I think we made that as a hard rule. Right, so we let point. you equip buffs because we care a little bit less about that. But, you know, we're being careful with healing, right? We don't want, because what will happen is you will equip all your heals in the survival tray and use your trail master to just zip around as, as quick as you can, you know. And uh, we don't want to encourage you to do that because it's not, it's not what, what we want. Yeah, right? so we, 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 we are making some hard rules on where things go. And while that may seem like a bug, we're trying to maintain some semblance of balance, yeah. right? And and we, we really don't want uh, things to get out of control. So we're being pretty conservative at this stage, which is great. So you guys can bang on it and tell us what you think about it. Can we get a monster-based assassin, maybe Stoneborn? Maybe. We just didn't give everybody everything. Yeah. I mean... The, the Fae is technically a monster because she was only supposed to be female at uh, in the ye olden days before we did that uh, Kickstarter reward that opened up right. the mail. But uh, but she's uh, under the elf tree at this point. So We will we will be... Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, that's right. She's, that's right. she's under that's, Sylvan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say it's not out of the question. It's just... Uh, it's more of a time thing and we just didn't make every class and race a thing because it actually costs us a lot of uh, time to make all those animations port. Any plans on real world merchandise? Crowfall hoodies? Billy did a bunch of merchandise at one point. Yeah, I mean, so it wouldn't surprise me if we spool that up. He's been busy as all get out working on the new UIs. So not a lot of spare time for Billy. Any plans to allow us to allow or deny ally group from picking up dubers? Yes, the duber, now that we are starting to tighten up our contribution rules, we will be revisiting dubers and making it such that they are for the group that harvested them. So it's not essentially a free for all. This is gonna get worse with the assassin, I have a feeling, which is why we're looking at it soon. Hard hit point. Do, 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 do. The hit point values are very low. Have you considered making these a campfire resting buff instead? No, I mean, so that one manipulates regen, and our regen is, is generally very low because at some point we had a vision of the world regen taking a lot longer. Right. And in fact, maybe even dynamically adjusting regen rates out of combat down as the seasons progress into winter and you need to go find campfires. Yeah, and even though an individual tick may not seem a lot over time because it's constant and you can have it up over time, it's actually just as strong as any other heal. And it is the one, and in fact, Bard breaks the rules from, from that perspective in that it is strong as a normal heal, right? Um, so, How is it decided which classes get two uses of the sea power knight champion compared to the classes that get one use at full charge? Arbitrary goodness. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, that's it's like whoever, you know, basically some uh, ultimates are quite better than others. Some are right. the kitchen sink, literally. Can recall be interrupted by enemies via combat? Yes, if you interrupt them via knocking them more than two meters away from their start point or... Uh, I would imagine control effects. Yeah, any, con stop. any suppress, stun, or knockdown will interrupt it. 
Actually, some pushbacks, I believe, also interrupt. They have the, the stagger applied, so pushbacks. Oh, that's right, the stagger stuff. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Any news on a fix for Gaia's Whale, the bear? It's still wonky, passing right through targets at point blank range, firing off center, et cetera. Thing. So, unfortunately, the firing off center is where the server thinks you are, which is one of the reasons why we went from so many projectiles to Raycast, is keeping the sync between where you are on the server and where your cat character is strafing or whatever. Like when we first put strafing in, we noticed that your arrows would be up to yeah, three to four way. meters to your right or left. So that's what led us down this road is the fact that keeping a tight sync between the client and the server with projectiles is challenging because then you're going to feel a delay when they cast. And as we all know, even a slight delay can be felt and it doesn't feel good. Yeah. Which is how we ended up where we are today is we went for feel rather than um, look. Plate with support power on it. Welcome to plus 20 support power until the numbers get bigger. It does not help. We may need to look at the final value. And is that 20? I think that's 20 support rating. It is. Uh, we'll have to look at it. Yeah. Essentially, it should be. I actually, I thought it was heal bonus. Oh, I'll, I'll look at it. Okay. Right There's it. actually the heal bonus now is on the uh, the leather a, as part of a, a built-in non non custom. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, or at least it's not on the chest piece. Right. But the resources. No, that, that's true. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're talking about the support rating on plate. If, there shouldn't actually be. If that's you, right. Yeah. Because if, if you make a uh, a metal plate that has attack power or support power, mm -hmm. I think it's giving the rating stat, which is a which tenth. is right. So if you have twenty, then that's going to give you effectively two. Support rating, which is effectively two well, two HPS or no, two the other DPS. Way around, right? I mean, yeah. So we need to look I, I'm at. Not, it. Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly the plate with support power on it means, right? Because we we've added um, for chain and um, leather since they both have damage bonuses to make it fair for healers. We also added a commensurate healing bonus. They're talking about the subcomponents. Okay. So if you make a metal plate or a stitched leather that has those specific stats on them, okay. the alloys. I'm not familiar with exactly what stats are on, on those. Mark added them along. It's a lot of sleeps. I think it's been like over 300 sleeps since you did that. Yep, we can look at it. Uh, any thoughts on huge amounts of CC in the game? Just curious why every base class OS gets loaded out with two to three forms of CC can get a little out of hand. That's why we have the resolve stuff. And at some point, I'm sure there will be a great sundering of powers where we decide this is too good for this class. Right. That, or we may, well, I don't want to say that, but we, there's, there's stuff I want to do if I can just get Blair to let me. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> uh, okay. Focus Orb for Frostweaver, a base weapon. No, the Focus Orb is a Master of Arcane specialization. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Will more classes get access to the Templar Greatsword, or is this weapon only granted to Templars? It is only granted to Templars because it's the two-hand narrow grip animation. We do weapons based on their animation style. So the other two-handers, like the Champions, Axe, and Mace, are wide grips. And so, like, the Minotaur and the, um, the uh, Half-Giant have that animation set. Not, I think Human is the only one Human, and that would mean Half-Elves are the only ones with the closed two grip. Making a full set of leather armor requires 400-ish leather to do so. Have you thought about reducing it by a factor of 10 and adjusting the drop rates? 40 leather is more palatable than 400 from an optics perspective. Well, so the leather drop rates get really, once you actually have a lot of harvesting skills, so, and you see crits going off more frequently, the amount of leather goes way up. If you remember the early days of the harvesting stuff, we showed you potentially how much a, a crit could give. So tweaking as always, but again, I, I think the amount you're going to get is going to go way up. What is the toxin proc mechanic? A chance or a cooldown? Uh, it's a chance, and the chance is the biggest chunk of the chance comes from the uh, the poison item you have equipped. So the advanced poison item has a much higher, even if you do a poor job of it will have a higher um, uh, poison proc chance than the um, basic one. So it's always beneficial to seek out an alchemist. Yeah. Okay. 
When do you think Frostweaver will be ready for testing? Not soon Next at Tuesday, all. No. No. Next Tuesday, no. Um, stealth Duber Gathering. Can you make it gathering? Can you make it so grabbing Dubers pops you out of stealth? We're and about we, to rework again the whole Duber system, so we are definitely going to look at... I don't know that that one's going to be such of a problem once we make yeah, them group It's based. not really going to matter as much. It'll be because it'll just be... They won't even see them. Right. You won't, you won't see them and it'll only be yeah. your group stealthers that are grabbing it. Yeah, so. or, or, or extended group. Or extended group, if, right. If we make it uh, once we get up to, to meta group sizes. But that is in the distance. Uh, to sum up, 5.4 is coming really quick. Bunch of final polish stuff going in there. Oh, you know what? I didn't mention that we had a Unity upgrade in there, too. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we jumped from... Uh, I mean, for you guys, it, it's not... transparent to you guys. Yeah, it's not super transparent to you guys, but for us, it means the tool got better on the back end, and a lot of optimizations were made by the Unity team, which is good because it's just stuff that we pick up for using Unity, and you guys will just appreciate it in the long run. But that being said is it may cause some uh, issues... Uh, in, in small systems that we don't touch very often or don't look at that hopefully you guys will help us suss out while this is on the test server, making its way to live. But the vast majority of the big bugs have been knocked out of 5.4, so I'm pretty confident that'll be on live pretty quick. Pretty quick.